video, I want to share with you five mistakes I have made so far during my debt-free journey. What's up guys, my name is Justin and welcome back to the channel where we make little changes with huge impacts on our lives. If you're new here, I upload videos with different tips and tricks to help you improve your life, so please consider subscribing. If you think your debt-free journey is going to start off perfect and be smooth sailing the entire way, you are out of your mind. I think so many people believe they need to get everything right, right from the beginning. And if that is the mentality you have, you are setting yourself up for failure right before you even start. We have been on our debt-free journey for a little over a year now. And during that year, we have done a lot of things right, but we have also done way more things wrong. And in today's video, I want to share with you some of the mistakes that we have made and how those mistakes have actually helped us along our journey. The first mistake I made when we first started was I pushed my family into this journey. Megan and I have talked about getting out of debt and we have tried different methods over the years, but none of them really worked. We would save some money here, pay off something there, but a few months down the road, we were back where we started still in debt and broke. When I first heard about the Dave Ramsey plan, I was all in, no questions asked. I jumped right in and was ready to go. My family on the other hand really didn't know exactly what I was talking about, but I didn't care. I was all in and I was taking them with me. Expenses were getting cut, fun activities were no more, and our lives were gonna be reduced like crazy. And that was a huge mistake. It took me a little bit to realize that what I was doing was ridiculous and it was actually hurting us more than it was helping us. I would highly recommend that if you wanna start getting out of debt, make sure your partner is on board and you make a plan and budget together. Don't try and do this on your own because it will not work. Which also leads me to the next mistake I made. I pushed my budget onto them. The budget I created was the budget we were gonna use. The problem with this is I wasn't taking into consideration how they felt about the budget or what they felt appropriate amounts were for each category. If I wanted to set the grocery budget for $100 every two weeks, I did, no questions asked. And if I wanted to set our gas budget for $30 for every two weeks, I did it. And because of this, a lot of issues started popping up along the way because my amounts were not realistic. I wasn't setting amounts we could actually live off, which led me to getting frustrated when money in our bank account was being used. Not only that, but I was forgetting to add a lot of other expenses into the budget, like kids' activities, like dance, baseball, gymnastics, you know, and fun little activities that they could do just to kind of make everybody enjoy the process a little bit more. You know, I thought I was doing the right thing because my goal was to get us out of debt as quick as possible without checking with my wife. And at the time I felt like I knew how the process would work so only my opinion mattered. And boy, I was wrong. Like I said before, it is very important that you sit down and go over your budget together. Set the amounts together. And if they need to be adjusted, adjust them together. If possible, I would suggest having a monthly meeting where you and your spouse sit down and review the previous month and plan the upcoming months. This way you both know exactly what's going on and what to plan for in the future. When you're both on the same page when it comes to your budget, it will make sticking to the journey for the long haul a lot easier. And the third mistake I made was I set our budget too tight or I made it too loose. And this kind of goes back to my last mistake. When we first started, I set the budget so tight there wasn't any room for error or a lot of room for error. You know, every amount had to be perfect and we weren't allowed to waver. If we used all of our grocery money, that's it. No more. If we are running low on gas, sorry, you should have been more frugal with your driving. Not my fault. After a month or so, I realized the amounts I set were way too strict and our debt-free journey was becoming a nightmare. So I sat down without my wife and I adjusted the budget, but I set it too loose. I upped the amounts by more than I should have and we had very little afterwards to go towards debt. We were spending in a way that was similar to how we were prior to starting our debt-free journey and we were going nowhere. And honestly, it took us about three months to really nail down a budget to where we knew we were getting everything we needed for the month and we don't run out, but we weren't spending like we were in Congress anymore. So if you are in a position where your budget isn't working, sit down together and really talk out the numbers. Where have you been overspending? Where can you cut back? Where are the major struggles coming from and where can you improve? And give it time. Your best budget is a budget that adjusts to your life 
and what's going on in that month. Not every month is gonna have the same exact budget, so adjust along the way. And the fourth mistake I made when we first started our debt-free journey was I started working too many nights at my second job. I took on my second job within three days of starting our debt-free journey, and I reached out to Megan and I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. I can work here at night and then we can crush our debt even faster, and she was all up for it. But the mistake I made here was I started working four to five days a week while working a day job. I had overcommitted to my night job and I was exhausted all the time at my day job. Not only that, but I was also coaching my son's baseball team, which took up about three to four days a week, along with gymnastics practice and t-ball practices for my youngest son. For the first two months working my second job, I was home maybe one hour a night and ran on around three hours of sleep. Honestly, I was exhausted and you know, I contemplated quitting my pizza job almost every week, but I knew in the end it would be worth it. And luckily the pizza place I work for is very flexible when it comes to my time and they allowed me to change my schedule throughout the past year. As of right now, I only work two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday, from around eight to one in the morning. And what I would recommend is never work your nights like three or four nights in a row. Try to have a gap in between your days. That way you can get caught up on sleep and actually have time to spend with your family at night. I know a lot of people recommend going balls to the walls when getting a second job, but if you can't maintain that throughout your entire journey, don't do it. Start off working a couple days a week and then add more as you go. And the fifth mistake I've made when starting our debt-free journey kind of wraps up all of them snakes into one. I didn't communicate with my wife in the beginning very well. I made a lot of selfish decisions when we first started our debt-free journey, and thankfully my wife didn't divorce me at the beginning. You know, honestly, I, I bet she probably thought about it. She was and has always been very supportive of every crazy idea that pops into my head. And so far, this crazy idea has had the greatest impact on our life. So like I said earlier, I would highly recommend that you and your partner sit down and talk through every decision along the way. Even if you think it is a small decision, run it by them first to get their thoughts. A small decision to you might be a huge decision to them. There are a lot of things that will pop up along the way, such as birthdays, holidays, vacations if needed. What's a good amount to spend on a birthday for your kids? What's a good amount to spend on a birthday for somebody else's kid? What's a good amount to spend on a birthday for a friend? What would you consider to be an emergency and force you to use your emergency fund? What are you willing to sacrifice to get out of debt sooner? What aren't you willing to sacrifice to get out of debt sooner? Groceries, date nights, kids activities, there's gonna be these little things that pop up and you need to know how your partner's feeling about these decisions as well. The more you all feel involved in this journey, the better it will be. In a previous video, I said that this journey sucks and it does, but you can make it that much better just by being on the same page together and tackling your debt as a team. Your debt-free journey is not gonna be perfect. You will make mistakes along the way, but it's important that you learn from those mistakes and you make the necessary adjustments along the way. Have we made mistakes? Yes. Will we continue making mistakes? Absolutely. But as we say in our house, everything is figure outable. You will find a way. No matter what happens, we will figure it out. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you found any value in this whatsoever, then please throw me a thumbs up and comment down below with a mistake that you have made along your debt-free journey. If you've made it this far and you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I wanna help you get out of debt and stay out of debt one tip at a time. And as always, let's keep growing.